And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game that's very oddly named Revolta or Revolt AAA. I'm actually not sure why that's the name of the game. This game is about a war between rubber ducks and robots. Why is it about that? Because, well, there is no theme. <laughs> I, uh, there were some notes that originally this was about a revolution, about two different things, and they decided to change it, and they said, change it to whatever you want. So they changed it to Ducks Against Robots. Okay. This is a card game from Dr. Reiner Knizia. Uh, it's a game in which you are trying to be on the winning team, but have the lowest card of the winning team. That's interesting, I thought. Let's see. Now, Revolt AAA here has a deck of cards that are numbered from 0 to 5, and they're in two different colors. There's the ducks and the robots. And you're going to shuffle this pile, and you're going to give 11 cards to each player, and you're going to make a deck of 11 cards in the middle of the table. Now, what's going to happen is, each round of the game, there's 11 rounds, you'll turn over the middle card of the table. So that's one card that has been played. Everybody else, let's say there's four other players, plays a card like this, face up, and then we turn all the cards over. We're now going to add the colors together. Ducks have six, and the robots have two. Ducks win! And the person who wins the overall trick is going to be the person who played the lowest number in the one that won. So here, for example, ducks win. So we put all these cards underneath this, give it to the player who played the one, and ducks have one point. So we turn over the next card. There's a ducks that have five. Again, the four players play their cards. We flip them over. Eight for the robots, five for the ducks. Robots win. The person who played the three wins this round. So they put this in front of them, and the robots have another point. And we play another one. And again, four players. And this is just kind of to give you a sense of how the hands play out. Here, Everyone played Ducks. Ducks obviously win. Lowest number gets it. So Ducks have another point. And so this is going to keep going until either the Ducks have four points or the Robots have four points. At that point, it's over. And that side's won. The Ducks have triumphed over the Robots or the Robots have triumphed over the Ducks. Each stack of the winning team is worth one point. Players will reveal any cards left in their hand and any card you have left in your hand that matches the winning team is also worth a point, and whoever has the most points wins. I can't imagine many people playing that way, though. And you can play an alternate way where you simply take those points and then play again, and you keep going until you get to a certain number of points. You can also play a version of the game called Bananas, where there's no extra deck of cards. Instead, each player basically plays the cards one at a time rather than simultaneously. And scoring is done pretty much the same way. Box size is good, art is good, easy to understand and play, difficult to figure out how to do what in the world you're doing at all, right? Okay, the concept of the game is interesting. I, I, I like, uh, there, there's two versions of the game. We'll talk about the, the normal version first. So I like that there's a card play out there. So everyone's looking at that card going, hmm. All right, so the robots have three. Now, the rules don't say anything about table talk, so I'm not really sure if you're like, hey, everyone, let's play robots. Oh, let's play ducks. I don't know if you can do that or not. I have done it. I don't think it changes the game much, but, I mean, you could play silently, too, or just not say what you're playing. But anyhow, you're putting these out, and you're tr those zeros are great cards because those zeros... Um, will automatically win the side for you. But if two players play the same number of the lowest, then that's canceled and it goes to the next highest. Now that's a wrinkle that really adds some depth to the game. And I probably should have mentioned that in overview, but I'm mentioning it now. Um, when two people play ones, for example, they both hung up by one, then the person who might have played the five wins. 
Now, because there's this think and double think, I really think the game works best with four or five players. With three players, it's okay, but there's more cards out there, and there's more of a chance of, sure, I'll play this zero. I feel pretty confident that, I mean, it looks like there's already a blue five out here. I'll play a, a blue zero. I feel pretty confident. Someone else might think the same thing. The zeros cancel out, and the guy who played the two wins it. Or maybe everyone else played red cards. So you can see there's going to be some confusion amongst players um, as to what they should play at any given point in time. And I really think this game's going to be so weird for some people, they're not going to like it. This is probably going to be divisive. Some people are going, oh, it's totally random. I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I actually understand that point of view because it can feel like that. But I think there's some trickery in there. Now, you can really cut that randomness out if you play the Revolta Bananas variant where each person plays a card. So I might play the blue three and you sit there and go, all right. I'll play red. At that point, it almost becomes a simple version of the, the, the Atlantic Storm game or Pacific Typhoon where you're like playing cards and you're trying to win your side. But here there's that wrinkle where you want to have the lowest card per side. I mean, you're also, there's going to be luck. Obviously, you're, you're stuck with the cards in your hand. You have to deal with those. But you could keep a bunch of blue back hoping against hope that the robots win. And then you have a bunch of cards in your hand that give you points. Definitely, you don't want to play this as a one-off. You want to play like a certain number of points, maybe 15 points, 20 points, something like that. And it's certainly going to be a quirky, unusual card game that not everyone likes. I like it, though. I found it interesting and unique, and I think the idea of robots fighting ducks is funny. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.